Hello. AFK I'm gonna leave. You're moving finely. What the hell are you, Venom? I wanted to stop, but also, I did it. Venom. You gonna talk. That British cop, though. <laughs> Laughing. You got it too. In trying again.
here you go. onto the sand, and the good smell went into an old pipe. You anime hentai tentacle. Yes. yes. Got, Got closer, closer to the booty. All of my stomach started growling. And suddenly, I was me again. I held my breath for a long time, but I couldn't hear anything. I think it's waiting for me to fall asleep. But it's not going to wait much longer. It needs to stay, and we both know I will be delicious. Because, because the body. The body. Booty. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. This will be obvious later, oh, but you're old my now. mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. Did you just start the game? I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Kind of. Her room was like a museum. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune. And misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse. His wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. Oh, it's not Jonan. It's Jonan. On January 7th, 1937, he set sail with his family and his house hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore in their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. It's Bridget Wright. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Lewis died a week before we left. But Edie had already started to memorialize him. Oh, his story, I had to do. Edie knit me a new pair of gloves every year, just in time to replace the old ones. Never mind. When Edie told people someone was killed by a dragon, 
She could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. There's a secret in this bathroom. There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. This is how you get to every single room. Secret cupboards and stuff. Every room. No one's here again. This is Mr. Space Boy's story. He goes a loop de loop and away he goes. I knew Grandpa Sam had stone. a twin. And that he never talked about him. It's my second playthrough, so I know what I'm doing. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I want to remember <coughs> my brother by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom. And he did. At Barber funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again. And he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up. Then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie rubbed off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again. Passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. I go over next. Oh, Barbara, the actress. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her. Of all the all stories, stories people wrote about Barbara's death, death, I'm surprised Edie saved, saved this one. one. 
Old Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. As a child star, Barbara was famous for her screen. Now at 16, she was all washed up, a has-been. But in a lucky break, she then asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just a boost her career. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan, and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... Now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was cancelled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums and Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... That came from the basement. You're right. Also, I loved your delivery from that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles in secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, baby. They'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick had not returned. So Barbara went to look for him right on cue. And banjo time. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. She found Rick's crutch and imagined the worst. trying to scare you to help you find your screen. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Later. Barbara! Walter? What's going on up there? Ah! Okay, I'm coming up. But if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Tom, you go kill Mr. Hookman. Walter vanished, but his bedside radio was still on. 
Orcas Island police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quiet. Smashing. <laughs> Dying to speak to young Barbara. No one's there. No. She heard whispering. It was coming from inside the house. Oh dear. as they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara. She had a taste for stardom, but unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. And little Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard, but that's another story. As for Barbara, Tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. I guess now I know why Mom didn't like me playing with the music box. Whenever people ask me about my family, the first thing they always want to know about is Barbara.
Mom, Mom said, said the basement, basement was off limits, limits. Unless, unless I wanted, I wanted another, another tetanus, tetanus shot. shot. I saw, I saw Edie, Edie sneak, sneak down, down to the basement, basement once, once, carrying packages. I thought maybe she was hiding presents. It turned out she was hiding a lot more than that. I remember asking Mom once about where Walter had gone. She said after Barbara died, he got as far away as he could. If there's a pattern in all these stories, I think it's that none of us has gotten very far. Goodbye, everyone. I can't believe I've been down here for 30 years. On that first day, after the shaping started, I didn't think I'd survive a week. But after a few days, I settled into a routine. That's what kept me sane. Having a schedule, living for today. I always expect it to be dead tomorrow. But if you wait long enough, you get used to anything. Even a monster on the other side of the door starts to feel normal. Almost friendly. And then one day, everything just... stopped. Whatever that thing was, it was gone. Maybe it got tired of waiting. Well, maybe I just got tired of being afraid. It's been a week now, the longest in 30 years. I'm done waiting. I have to leave while well, I still can. Down here I know it's out there somewhere. Um, whenever we revisit this, whenever we revisit the outside train tracks that he goes to, as Edith, <coughs> try to spot the difference. Whatever killed Barbara and Molly and Calvin. Maybe this is all a mistake. But I need to stop living the same day, even if it kills me. Whatever's out there, I want you to know I'm ready for it. I'm going to appreciate all of it, especially the food. I don't mind if I only have a year month or a single week I'd be happy with one new day I can already imagine the sun in my face tell me if you saw all the trees and how much Walter died like when I was six I can't believe my mom never told me he was down here. I'm sure my mom was trying to protect me.
Maybe she was afraid I'd end up like Walter. But if she never told me about an uncle under the house, I can only imagine what else she was hiding. I don't want to make the same mistakes she made, trying to bury something that's still alive. Now that there's only one of us left, or maybe two, I thought it was time I heard the stories for myself and found out what happened to everyone else. But now I'm worried the stories themselves might be the problem. Maybe we believed so much in a family curse, we made it real. so much land, but now there's legit nothing. You can see where it curves off to that side. And that's the old house. I don't know if I should even be writing this. Maybe it'd be better if all this just died with me. But I thought you should know about your family. And the history you're a part of. Hey Panda, you still there? Though to be honest, I feel as lost as you probably do right now. I think people in these stories believed them, for what that's worth. of imagination and stubbornness and madness. Any of it seems possible. been surrounded by death for so long we've just gotten used to it what kind of family finishes building a cemetery before starting the house this family it's embarrassing for me to admit this but wasn't it was failed for review so I'm gonna show it the pet cemetery maybe the fuck the bingo one. three of the gerbils were mine two had been my fault Sven built the house, but it was Edie who designed the cemetery. I'm sure Odin's monument had been Edie's idea. My mom was always trying to move on, but for Edie, the past never went away. She could see it poking out of the water at low tide. Edie said she dreamed about the old house every night. side was always easier for me to understand. 
But the older I get, the more I can see where my mom was coming from. She lost two of her brothers, just like I did. I get why she tried so hard to protect us. There's so many things I wish I could ask my mom now. Part of me thinks this is what she wanted all along. For me to come back someday and find everything out for myself. Off to the higher area. Looking back on it now, if she told me there was going to be so much climbing, I never would have come when I was 22 weeks pregnant. That explains your belly. I never met Grandpa Sam, but I think he and my mom had a lot in common. Down for the teacher room now. No time for Mr. Deer Man. They were both pretty intense. I one of the, I know the most tragic one is coming up soon, so. Dawn, I promise, we'll never forget this weekend. Yes, sir. These memories are gonna last perfect. It's gonna rain the whole weekend, isn't it? I will never forget this weekend, Dad. That's the spirit. Okay, got it. I'm gonna take some pictures, okay? Just be careful. The camera's older than you are. The funny part. We should not have drunk all that coffee. Hey! <laughs> That's a keeper. I'm just saying, I'm not always gonna be here, Don. You'll need to remember this stuff, if you want to survive. I'll be fine, Dad. You know who else thought he was gonna be fine? Some guy who died. Don, I'm being serious. Dad! Good eyes, Don. Before you take the shot, let me get a picture of it. Dad, I... Just breathe. Turn off your imagination. Focus on the target. Let me get behind you. And then... Don, you don't have to do anything. But if you want to survive, you need to be strong. Time for the bang. Great, Great shot, shot Don. Don. <laughs> I'm proud of you, Don. Always remember them, okay? He dies. Dad, it's twitching. I think That's it's totally so normal, Don. Just focus on the camera. Try not to think about Dad! it. Of all these stories, that's the one I wish most that my mom had told me. Time for probably one of the saddest ones of all. 
After Sam died, my mom and Edie got really close. They'd both lost a lot. Dear Kay, do you remember the way Gregory used to laugh when he thought he was alone? Like something funny was happening, but only he could see it. And then Mr. Kite I can't imagine my mom ever writing poetry, poetry and yet a poem, poem for Gus. Gus. Who always, always said, said the wedding, wedding was a bad idea. 
Our father never hit us kids, at least not very hard. Before the day my brother said with teenage disregard that he'd be dead before he'd see a wedding in our yard. Father made him come, of course, but Gus stood far apart, just flew his kite and bottled up the storm inside his heart. I tried to talk him out of it, but though he'd never met him, we don't need a stepmom, were the words that I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss the bride. photos came, Dad ordered him to come, come here. here. But Gus declined, and as a sign held up his middle finger. Rebellion! The wind picked up, and panicked geese appeared and quickly went. But all the humans did that day was go inside the tent. destroy the tent our dad would crudely made. The thunder sounded much too close and full of angry power. But all my father said to this was to make the music louder. I wish that I could truly say I thought about you on that day. Out there on the beach alone, just you, the wind, the sea, and foam. But I didn't, until we found you. She never talked about him, but Mom told me once if I was a boy, they were going to name me Gus. My mom moved up to the loft after her brothers died. At the time, it was as far away as she could get. She spent a summer building houses in Calcutta, where she met my dad, Sanjay. Is her mother? My mom moved to India a week after graduation and got a job teaching English. Lewis was born a year later. Lewis, her brother? When my dad died, I don't think mom knew where else to go. I'm sure Edie was happy to have her back. Mom, obsessed with the house. The house had to get a little bigger, but Edie was used to that. And for a while, things were good, almost normal. But it didn't last. The beginning of the end was Milton's 10th birthday, when Edie gave him a castle. Oh, this is the boy that disappeared into the magic pain door. 
Did you get to the left? Now I got now I got here for a pregnant lady at all. Milton Finch in the Magic Paintbrush. Oh, crap, record. Four when Milton disappeared. He disappeared into the magic door. Off to Weed Man now. Mom spent months searching for my brother. Then she sealed the doors. Whatever Milton had found in the house, Mom didn't want it getting out. Yeah, that way. Technically, it's possible just to skip this part completely. If you see it. Mom, Mom definitely, definitely blamed Edie, but I think Lewis blamed himself. After he graduated, he just spent more and more time in his room until Mom got him a job at the cannery. This room smelled very, very familiar. That part of him lived on. Don Finch. Fireweed Road. Oh. Dear Mrs. Finch, as Lewis's psychiatrist, I can understand your desire for an explanation. As I see it, the trouble began in January, shortly after we convinced your son to seek treatment for substance abuse. Newly sober, I believe Lewis first noticed the monotony of his daily life. He kept working at the cannery. But he withdrew part of himself. In our sessions, I saw the same behavior. His mind began to wander. I asked him to describe it. He said he started small, imagining a labyrinth. He'd feel his way about. Then something moved. Bats and toads. And things that have not names. He knew it was all in his head. But he 
took it very seriously. I had hoped he'd find himself. But he found something more. I worried about him then. Daydreaming at the cannery. I spoke with his boss. But he said Lewis had become a model employee. Methodical, tireless, focused. Like a whole new Lewis. So I let him go on. I even encouraged it. It seemed very promising at first. He told me he'd made a new friend. On the edge of a city he named Lewis Topia. He built the city up slowly, brick by brick. Then he made musicians. And songs for them to play. He talked about starting a band. He was always humming or something. Every day his imagination grew stronger. He no longer spoke at the cannery. But his chopping was as reliable as ever. Then one day it struck him. That all the cheering crowds, even the stones under his feet, were all in his imagination, so he could do whatever he wished. He held an election for mayor. And he won. They begged him to stay, but his mind was already wandering. It became a game for him. He'd conquer a city, then immediately push on. New Lewisville. St. Louis. He started drifting away from our reality. Minneapolis, until one day he forgot to go home from the cannery. Even as his mother pleaded with him, part of Lewis kept sailing on. In Lewisburg, he heard rumors of a Beautiful prince. I'm gonna make him gay now. The prince was on his own quest for... Radiant rainbows. Followed the sound of his.
electric city. His chase led him to a golden palace east of the sun and west of the moon. Even then, his logic remained sound. He knew the world was all in his imagination. He was so proud of having created it. In his own eyes, he'd become something greater than a king. For someone who'd never known success in the real world, I think it was overwhelming. And then it struck him that the real Lewis was not the one chopping salmon, but the one climbing the steps of a golden palace. My imagination is as real as my body, he told me. It was hard to argue with him. began to forget the world we know. I think it pained him to remember Lewis, the cannery worker. He began to despise the man with a royal contempt. I still, I still thought, thought I could save him. him. Even after he said he was being crowned king over all the lands of wonder. Uh, the palace would be packed with his companions. I'm taking my headset off. Insisted on advising him. I think you know. Mrs. Finch, your son was a kind man who will be missed by all of us who knew him.
My brother was really cool. I wish you could have met him. On the way back from Lewis's funeral, my mom told me to start packing. She waited until the day before we left to tell Edie. I'm not sure if she wanted to make it easier or harder. I wish we'd stayed. But I understand why we left. My mom ended up leaving everything behind. What happened that night had been coming for a long time. Maybe it should have come sooner. But it had to end one way or another. All that's left now is to tell you about that last night. Last day, Edie just watched us pack and didn't say a word. Until supper, when she raised her glass and said, To our final night together, and all our final nights apart. Grandma, you know what I said about alcohol. Some of your medications are very Edith, specific. I left a present for you in the hallway. Why don't you go open it? The grown-ups have to argue now. I'm sorry, you're right. We're all leaving tomorrow. Let's just enjoy our last- I'm not leaving. Edith, you're excused. The power had been shut off that morning, but Edie always had plenty of candles. When my mom sailed the library, I don't think she knew about the other entrance. Or that Edie had a key to it. you're afraid of isn't going to end when you leave the house.
Aegis has a right to know these stories. My children are dead because of your stories. I think it's best if Edith and I leave tonight. We'll have the nursing home send a van for you in the morning, okay? Dear Edith, there's so many stories I wish I could tell you, but there's only time for one. This is about what happened on the night you were born. That night, the tide went way, way out. 